Hello, Serge here for the Backyard Driving Range. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, we got a question today. Very unusual, but it's come up once or twice before, so it's kind of, I guess it's uh, kind of cool. And uh, here we go. This one comes from, from Jim. And Jim says, as a once a week amateur golfer on a limited income, I obviously cannot break out a new golf ball every few holes like the pros do. But how long can I play a ball before I should break out a new ball so that it is not adversely affecting my game? All right, cool. This has come up a couple times, as I've already said. And uh, so I'm just going to backtrack before I answer this question completely and say that, that at one time it came up way back in the beginning when uh, I was writing the dailies. And it got into uh, uh, actually a bunch of golfers on the on the blog below the, the daily started getting into about how long they play with a golf ball and and uh, just one time I just happened to go there somebody called me and or got to me and I, I went there and looked and and one gentleman had said I, I rode in and I said I had been playing a ball for about I'm guessing it's been in my bag probably at least a month and I was playing with it in the evenings and probably had at least 70 80 and 90 holes on it and a gentleman came back in and said he was up to like 140 45 or something or maybe a 160 it was up there really ridiculous and and then uh another thing that i've had that happens a lot to me is is i've had golfers especially if i'm at the same place when i was when i was at harbor town all those years out on the tee every single day or at my other cl uh, club where i'm there every day it doesn't happen quite as much because i'm not at a golf course every day because i'm sort of like a nomad i go from one place to another and and uh, it's a big thing that my students over here in town say when they, when they call me, the first thing they ask me is, are you home? Are you in town? All right. But people used to come up to me and they'd walk up to me and they'd go like this and they'd say, Serge, you know what this is? You see this? You know what this is? And, 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 and after the first time, I, I, I kind of knew it, knew it and I always, I'd always get, get uh, kind of cute with them and, and just pull their leg a little bit and I'd, say, I'd see what the ball was and if it was, I'd say Titleist or it's a, or it's a Callaway you know, or it's a Nike or whatever, and I'd say, uh, Pinnacle or whatever, and I'd say that, and they say, yeah, 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 but you know what else this is? And I said, no, what, I mean, you know, if it's, what else is it besides what it is? And they said, this is the first time in my life, in my golfing life, I've ever played 18 holes and finished with the ball I started with. So what does that tell you about the peak performance swing? Until they learn the peak performance golf swing, which is the most simple swing and hits it more solid and straight like I say many many times in some of these dailies when I'm finishing up you'll help you hit the ball more solid straight and longer that's living proof of it and how many of you out there can can not finally say you've played 18 holes with the same ball it's obvious that Jim over here must be doing it now and then because he's talking about how long he's asking how long he should play it so let's get right to that question today they make golf balls with mostly Sterling type golf uh, Sterling type covers, which is a much harder ball. Back when I learned how to play golf, and probably till around, I'd say, maybe late 70s, early 80s, most of the balls were made with what they called ballata. They were kind of like three-piece balls, a, a, a rubber core inside, then the rubber winding around it, and then, and then the ballata on top. Now, ballata was soft. You take, you take, in the days, if you topped the ball in those days and hit it right here, you, you actually hit, you put one heck of a big cut in it. All right, the, you start turning your ball into a cabbage. All right, so poof, that ball's gone really quick. Today, basically, you almost can't put a, you might can put a pretty, a little bit of a dent there. If you really top one like crazy, you might put a little bit of dent in it, but you'll never crack through that cover. At least not anymore these days that I've seen. All right, so I'd say if you put a finally, if you finally put a, uh, a dent in it, that you could see a mark, a straight line mark that the, the leading edge got it. I'd say by then it's no good because now that's going to start affecting the flight. The the the, the dimples have been the dimples have been uh, changed, so to speak. You got that you got that straight line in, and it can start affecting the flight. So if you hit a shot and you see the ball kind of waffling through the air, like you might see at a driver range, if you take a little ball over and you see, boy, that ball is pretty darn old. And you can start looking at it, and you can see flat spots on it. You can see wear spots on it, especially if they're picking them up, picking up their balls, uh, mowing the range, and picking up their balls. They could have clipped a flat spot on it. If you start seeing, if you if you hit a cart path, you hit a tree. It always blows my mind how when a ball hits a tree, it leaves a bigger scuff. At least it can leave a scuff on it. But yet hitting it pure with a really hard club face and doesn't do anything to it. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you can see little scuff marks on them. You hit a cart path. I think any any reasonably 
good player who, who's looking to play good golf, once his ball hits a car path, that's it. He might not even throw it in the shag bag because especially if it's been scarred and you see like a little bit of a hole in there, if it really hit hard in it and you got to dig, dig out sort of piece of stone or whatever that was in it or it hits into a hot, it hits rocks in the rough or something and, and cuts it up, I think pretty much say that's over for that ball. So if you play a long, long time, you, the, you could start to see that maybe it's wearing out. The, the color's not there very well to, to, see it in the, to see it very well in the air when it's in the air. Or, or if you're walking down, you have to have it in the rough to try to find it. You might want to throw it away then. So it's up to you, but ultimately, just keep watching the flight. And if that ball starts waffling or, or squirting through the air, then you know that there's something wrong. Because today, nowadays, they don't really get out of a round like they used to, and they don't cut like they used to, but they start to wear out. And it's your call when a ball has got too much wear on it for you to want to keep playing it and it's definitely done finish kaput throw it away in the shag bag maybe if it's not too bad if you hit a cart path or you hit a tree and it gouges it pretty good or, or scars it up pretty good or really tears up the cover it's over because you can't you, you that's not going to really work for you anymore because it's really going to get affected in flight all right so simple question i don't i think it's a simple answer in many cases it's up to you and like i said the uh balls are pretty much more long lasting today but you make the call, especially if it's staying round and it's staying relatively non-scarred. When is the wear and tear too much? That's your call. If it gets scarred and especially gets torn up from a cart path or whatever, it rocks, it's over. Time to, time to throw it away. All right, so hopefully this answers that question for Jim and for any of you that might have been thinking about it. So on golf ball quality and playing quality, that's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking to you again soon.